This is Cresta Base to Cresta 2-4. This is Base to Cresta 2-4. Henry, if your radio is broken, get on a phone and call Base. This is Cresta Base to Cresta 2-4. This is Cresta Cabs. Can you get on your radio and speak to me, Henry? You were supposed to be at Heathrow Airport over 45 minutes ago. Uh, Cresta 1 to base. Morning, Sam. Rain, this is Sam. What's occurring? Not a lot, darling. Henry's gone missing again. You were supposed to pick a Mr. Armin up at Heathrow Airport at quarter past four this morning. Didn't turn up. Oh, brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Mr. Armin is an account customer. That's just the news I wanted to hear before my muesli. I've just lost a bloody good account because of Henry. Zombie. No, it's all right. I sent Andre instead. Good, good. Now, that's what I would have done if I had been there. Now, listen to me, Ring. Listen carefully. Stay calm. OK, Sam. I'm coming in, Ring. I am coming in. All right, darling. See you soon. It's GLR, Phil Kennedy. The weather forecast today is... At the moment, the roads, they're pretty clear. Yeah, not for long. All this new music's OK, but every so often you need a great oldie. So back to 75 is original sin, and the devil's behind you. Mad comments. <coughs> Quiet, <coughs> Satan! You shall not be the king. No more the sleeping. He's just taking his name. He's gonna find you. What's the time, Basil? Joe Moe was at work, man. I'd like to deliver letters. Maybe I could help you one day. Yeah, one day, Marlon. <coughs> oh, I like this one. This is my favourite records. Oh, yeah. What is it? Oh, I don't know. It's just some old rock group. Look, why don't you go back to bed for a few hours? Don't like that one. You'll be back later. No, when I finish my shift, I'm going to do a few hours mini cabin. You're always driving that minicab. Don't I know it. Look, Marlon, a minicab to bring some extra money in for sausages and spaghetti hoops and all those other things you like. <laughs> Did Mum send me a birthday card? Marlon, your birthday was ten weeks ago. I think maybe she's forgotten. We haven't seen Mum for months now, have we? No, it was 1981, to be precise. Well, that's almost years, isn't it? She used to send me a birthday card with money in it. It's dead. Yeah, maybe it's got lost. Yeah, well, it's those bastards at the post office. Yeah, maybe. I won't be in tonight. I'm going out to dinner. So you go around and watch telly at Auntie Vera's and don't annoy her fish. You taking the woman out from that dating office? Yes, a lady from the dating bureau. <laughs> you gonna kiss her? I wouldn't have thought so for one moment. Sod it. Half past seven, Phil. Phil, it's seven thirty. Oh, sod it. <laughs> Madonna, Shea, come on, darling, it's time for school. Oh, sod it. Shut up, you silly little thing. Be quiet, you'll give yourself a sore throat. <laughs> Oh, look at that. She's beautiful. I mean, how do they get class birds like that to get their kit off? I think it's called money, Barry. Oh, yeah. You'll have plenty of that soon, won't you, Reggie? Yeah. Give me a few years. Yeah, you're going to open your own cab company, ain't you? That's right. If you're going to get any of my customers cocked, there'll be trouble. No, Sam. I'm setting up a firm aimed solely at my own community. Yeah, curry cabs. <laughs> Only joking. 
Right, listen up, everyone. We've got a lot of jobs on today. We need organisation, organisation, and then a bit of organisation. It's all taken care of, Sam. Everyone knows what they're doing. OK, I want everyone to know what they are doing. Raji, if you're on the school run, darling. Andre? Yeah, Bob. You've got the 9 o'clock Ealing to Richmond and an 11.45 pick-up from Heathrow. All stored and saved, Reen. Right, we need communication, a dialogue, understanding. A minicab does not drive itself. Well, there's a radical thought. Sorry, Cambridge? Well, I I've just never heard that saying before. A minicab doesn't drive itself. It it's something to remember. Thank you. Listen to this boy. He's been to university. Right then, Muse Lee. Brilliant. And the doctor told me to keep my colon clean. Oi, Barry, pop down a planet cricket, get us a bacon burger. <laughs> Could you get the dog down, please? You're only playing, love. Yes, I know. I'm having great fun myself, honey. I've got to get on me round. Down, donut. Right, listen up, everyone. Let's all keep an eye on the clock. Time is very important in our business. Arrive early, you've got a happy punter. Arrive late, you've got a happy rival cab firm. Good morning, everyone. Henry, where have you been? You were supposed to pick Mr. Armin up this morning. I got lost. Lost? It's Heathrow Airport, cock. It's bigger than the Isle of Bleeding White. I mean, how could you miss it? All you've got to do is follow a plane. No, Sam, I found the airport, you understand. I got lost in the terminal. So, I spoke to a man in uniform. He gave me the impression he was a man in authority. He carried a gun, at least. Next thing I know, I'm in an office being questioned. They wanted to see my papers. I said to them, I am not an illegal. I am a legal. What are you? A bunch of damn fools? Oh, well, at least they let you go. No. After I said that, they strip searched me. And that is not a nice experience, I'm telling you. Well, why didn't you just show them your identity card? They found it for themselves. Where did you keep it then? In my jacket. They went through my clothes. Fools. Still, Jesus was with me. Pity Mr. Armin weren't. Well, you're here now, Henry. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Next job's yours. Press the cabs. Yes, darling. Where do you want to go to? Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, then again, it's all for effect. These days, all women are lesbians. Sorry? What was that, Barry? Well, they are. Take a look at any magazine, and what do you see? Yes, Two girls kissing and cuddling each other. I've never seen that. You don't buy the magazines I buy. Bye. Thank God. They're all at it. Roseanne Barr. Oh, oh. Not that any bloke won't have a crack at her. It'd be like shagging a bouncy castle. <laughs> and then there's Zoe from Emmerdale. Zoe from Emmerdale? Yeah, that bat bird. That she, of all people, turns out to be a bull dyke. Beautiful she is. Oh, I wouldn't say no. I bet Zoe from Emmerdale would. You ever had a permanent relationship, Barry? Oh, yeah. Loads, yeah. Never lasts long, though, no. I always tell them to like it, yeah. I can't see the, the point of uh, blokes chasing after birds. Well, in your case, Barry, it does seem futile. Yeah, well, these days, all you need is a tenor in a back seat. Oh, you old romantic, you. Press the cabs. Look at that basil, yes, the postman. Poor old sod. He's so desperate, he's joined a computer dating mm -hmm. agency. Why? After the way his first wife treated him, run off and leave him with a backward son. Marlin's not backward. Well, he's dyslexic. Dyslexic? He couldn't even bloody well spell the word. Hello? Is that you, Phil? Hi, Sam. What do you want? Okay, okay, can you come into work today? <laughs> Sam, how many times do we have to go through this rigmarole? I never work on Fridays. I've got a gig tonight. Yes, yes, and I want you the very best Henry. cab officer oh, run. That's I'm me. Here, remember? <laughs> <laughs> but you won't be working till eight or nine. If you're calling your soppy songs in a group working. I mean, this is a very busy day for us, Cock, and I appreciate all the help I can get. Sam, there's nothing I can do. I've been booked. You've been booked? Listen, Sam, 
You couldn't get booked if you played centre half for Wimbledon. Now, this is a long job, darling. You've got to go from Southall to Farnham. Oh, yes. Do you know Farnham? No. Well, check your atlas before you leave. Your passengers will most probably know the way once you get close. Any problems, radio into base. Look, listen, son. You've got to get your priorities right. You've got a couple of kiddies to think of. All this poncing around like the salt of the swing with your mates. You have got to make up your mind what you want to be. A pop star or a minicab driver? Oh, that's a tough one, Sam. Yeah, and I hate making important decisions early in the morning. I'm not working today and I'm not working tomorrow. All right, I'll see you Sunday. Now, don't bother coming in Sunday either. You're fired. Sunday's a busy day, Sam. All right, cool. See you, Sunday. Give them work. Look after them. Even let them go on holidays. What do they do? Chuck it back in my face. I'm taking the dog for a walk. Come on, Satan. Yeah, my boy. Any problems, Reen? Anything? I'm on my mobile. Yeah, all right. Just stay calm, OK? Reen, stay calm. He only wants me to work this morning. I've got a big gig on tonight. Where are you playing? Rose and Crown, Stanmore. Oh. What's that mean? Oh. Well, I just thought it wouldn't hurt to go in for a couple of hours. Money would be handy. Chris? I've got a gig on tonight. I've got to conserve my energy. I mean, I don't just stand there and sing a few songs, you know. It's an act. I'm there for three hours sometimes. I put my heart and soul into it. And as Simon and Garfunkel said, you've got to keep the customers satisfied. Must be nice to be one of your customers and feel satisfied. What's that mean? Come on, Daddy. Oh, who said that? Who's that? Who said that? It's <laughs> 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 Friday. Can we stay up late tonight? Of course you can, darling. You can stay up as late as you like. Daddy, will you be here? Uh, no. No, Daddy's singing. Mummy's taking you to school. Again. Come on, you two. You have a nice rest. Come on. Oh! You're here at last. Sorry I'm late, Sam. I got held up on my round. This great day and I'd be pinned against a gate for half an hour and he was only playing. <laughs> Dinker. Your first job, Barry. Basil, your second job. Thanks a lot, Sam. I'm sorry. Basil, when are you going to get another car? I mean, when a minicab driver arrives to pick up a punter, the first thing they see leaves an impression. And when this turd on wheels turns up, they must perceive us to be a right bunch of cowboys. Perception, Basil. Remember? Perception. Thanks for the advice, son. Oi! Anyone heard from Henry yet? Still having trouble with the dogs, are you? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's an occupational hazard on the post. It's the uniform, you see. It's like a red rag to a bull. I might have just a thing for you. See my brother-in-law. Barry, works... you've got a pick-up. 19 Moffat Road. Take a Miss Charlotte to Pimlico and don't talk to her. Right, oh, same. I'll bring it in tomorrow. Basil! How's it treating you, man? Oh, not too bad, thanks, Andre. Are you still in this computer day? Oh, yes. I'm taking a woman out tonight, as it happens. Oh, is this the first one? Oh, no, no. There have been about six prior to tonight. How'd it go? Well, not too bad. They're all very nice, very, very personable, you know. Don't know good, eh? No. What's the phrase? Didn't come up to expectations. Why? What was the problem? Oh, I don't know. None of them said. Aha, uh -huh, there we are. Almost there now. Excuse me, driver. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to go to Farnham. Yes, almost there. Uh, no, you're heading to Farningham. Farningham is in Kent. We want to go to Farnham. Well, where is that then? The Farnham is in Surrey. Sorry? Oh, I hope I won't be sorry.
He's a lovely. I love these as well. Enjoy your meal. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, <sighs> get stuck in. Um, sorry, what's your name? Pamela. Ah, get stuck in Pamela. This looks lovely. Yes. You're a postman. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Do you, do you have a gift? You know, like a clairvoyant? No. It was on your CV. The agency sent me. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. No, well, they didn't send me your CV. You were in emergency. Well, what I mean is they, um, they just phoned up and said you were available. You, 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 were, you were free this evening. Yes. So, it must be exciting being a postman. But, I, I mean, it, it must be interesting. Oh, yeah. The first thing is you have to be at the office very early. And you go to this big counter that's covered in letters. You're not alone. There are lots of other operatives. Or in layman's terms, postmen. And you throw your letters into your pigeonhole. And this is what we call throwing off. Oh, I see. And then you sort out your boxes that are on your walk, i.e. delivery round. And every box is numbered. Really? And each box number corresponds with your walk number. You might be on walk number 28, walk number 6, walk number 16, walk number 30. Today I was on walk number 30. <laughs> we just don't realise what goes on in a sorting office. Oh, no, no. The public only sees the glamorous side of the postal service. <laughs> Has to be back. All right. I mean, he said, yeah. Okay. I'd like to sing a little song I wrote myself. If you want to join in, please do so. It's called Cry in the Night. Take it away, Buzz. You collect your parcels. Well, I mean, parcels you can carry, not big parcels like, um, oh, I don't know, um... Washing machines? Exactly. Then you deliver everything to the houses? No. Oh. Hold your horses, Pamela. Hold your horses. Then you check your bike. Every day you have to make sure your bike's in roadworthy condition. Do you know, more postmen have accidents on their bikes than are attacked by dogs. Then you go out and you deliver your letters. Oh, well... But I'm not just a postman. No. No. I'm a minicab driver as well. I do it on the side, you know, sort of moonlight. Get a bit of cash in hand. <laughs> I'm really enjoying tonight. Good. What do you do for a living, Pamela? I work for the Inland Revenue. Cry in the night. Don't let it die. Having a joke with me, aren't you? No. Oh, no. no. I only work in the personnel department. Oh, nothing to do with collecting taxes. I don't care if you're earning a few extra pounds on the side. Nothing to do with me. Good luck to you. Well, I don't earn very much. It's just, it's just a few extra quid just to make ends meet. I've got myself to keep and my son, well, steps on that He can't work. He, he's not very bright. He's a little bit, um, well, I hate to use the word, but he's a little bit, um, 
to London for the 1981 Cup final, you know, between Manchester City and Tottenham Hotspur. They drew one all. Of course. Uh, anyway, after the match, me and a couple of my mates went to the pub. That's where I met Astrid. She was a barmaid. She was beautiful. In a barmaid -y sort of way. Anyway, we got talking, you know, all this and that. And I felt really good. Beautiful women had never paid me much attention up till then. Well, they haven't since. Anyway, after the pub shut, she invited me back to her place, and I went. Went back there, and I stayed. Never went home again. Never even saw the return match. <laughs> oh, I was in love. Totally. So, what happened? Well, City lost 3-2. Oh, you mean between me and Astrid? Oh. Well, she got a special license, and we were married within a fortnight. She'd left me within a month. She just went. No, no, no explanation. I think she only married me till the right man came along. Left me with her crummy little flat and her son, Marlon. Oh, he's a lovely lad. It can be a bit tough, you know. He dribbles sometimes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to go on like this. There's no need to apologise. Would you like to come back to the flat for a coffee? No. OK. <laughs> Hello, this is Henry calling Cresta Cabs. This is Cresta Base to Cresta 24. Cresta 24. Hello, this is Henry calling Base. Henry, give us your call sign, love. This is Henry. No, you've got to give us your call sign, darling. Your call sign is Cresta 24. But you know it. Yes, but you have got to give it to us. It's all right, Sam. Yeah, just stay calm, I mean, oh, God, I've got fag ash all over my booba papers now. <coughs> Henry, where exactly are you? This is a problem, you see. I don't know. Zombie. There are lots of trees and fields. I suspect it's countryside, but where is anyone's guess? Can you see anything? I'll take a look. Oh, nothing. Uh, wait. There's a man looking in the window. Oh, it's my reflection. <laughs> Is he winding me up? Do you ever feel like I do, Barrow? In the old... Huh? <coughs> Pissed and alone. Believing and struggling. And I bastard to listen to you. Jimmy, man, you felt the fire and the passion, the smell of smouldering dreams in your nostrils. I can hear misery in every word you sing. Freddy, you felt it too, probably more than the others. I'll be with you one day, fellas. Why not you, Freddy? Obviously. Go rest you. Yeah. Pano, Jimmy, and Phil. World peace, eh, Jim? Hmm? Three hours I've been sitting here. Damn fool maps just help to confuse people. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like a sweet? No, thank you. No, thanks.
table to see the pop. What do you think you're doing? It's low. half past one in the morning. Well, the gig went really badly, you know. People. Start I am not like, interested in thing you thing and your pasta, stupid little all. gig. I've had enough of you in this silly, bloody rock and roll. You are 32, Philip. You're a dad. And you're a part-time pop star who drives a minicab to make ends meet. Shut up! Well, the ends aren't meeting anymore. We've got an empty fridge, we've got bills piling up. And what's your answer? Oh, buy a bottle of tequila and play music at 30,000 decibels. I'll tell you what, there's a little drop left. Why don't you finish Chris, it? Chris! Chris! Finish, finish it! Don't finish it. it! Why don't you accept it's going nowhere, Philip? You are never going to make it. You're just like all the others, aren't you? You either want to put me down or, or advise me to be sensible. Well, I don't want to be sodding sensible. Pepper is about the only ambition you're succeeding at. You're becoming a joke. Look at you. You dress up like Bono. Do, do you know what they call you down at the cab office? They've nicknamed you Bonio. Get your feet back on the ground, Philip. Come back down to earth. Well, grow up, eh, Chris? Yes, grow up. Daddy is grown up. Go back to bed. Daddy is grown up. Yeah, I know he is. I hear Daddy getting too full. No, darling, we can't. We're not married. Come on, back to bed. I know I haven't done much with my life yet, but all I need is a chance. Did you think those guys were born to stardom, you know? Some family business it took over from the dads. They had to struggle. Look, listen to this recording. It's just me doing my own stuff. I don't want to listen to it. All I want to hear from you is, Chris, I've got a proper job. I'm going to be bringing in a regular wage. I mean, look at our home. We can't have normal pictures on the walls. Look, landscapes or things like that. No, our walls are covered in your idols. I mean, look at them three. Look, it's the Trinity. You've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're in love with them, aren't you? Look, I just like their music, that's all. No. No, it's more than that. I hear you talking to them. And you know what really gets me? You talk to them with more affection and more passion than you ever talk to me. I'm 28, I'm the mother of two children, and I'm jealous of some pictures. They're the only ones that can talk to, the only ones that listen. They're the only ones who don't talk back. Two four calling two four. Henry, can you hear me? Oi, cock! Leave that dog alone. I've told Satan to bite your legs off. Do you have to bring Forrest Gump to work with you? Couldn't you get him out selling dusters or something? Come on, Sam. He runs errands for you, don't he? Goes and gets you sandwiches and things. If he hurts that guard dog, there'll be trouble. Oh, church him. He loves animals. And if he dribbles on my paperwork again, he's out. Well, I didn't dribble. I sneezed. Brilliant. Brilliant. This is supposed to be a minicab office, not a crash. I'll have Bonio and his daughters down here soon. That will be a treat, huh? <laughs> Being sick and God knows what. Oi, get off him. I'm taking him for a walk. Can I come? No. Green? I'm going out. Any problems? You're on your mobile. I'm on me mobile. Come on, Satan. Hi, right, Satan. Where have you been? We've been roughed off our bloody feet in here. This is a mini cab office, Barry. Not a holiday camp. Have a nice day. I'm a joke. Here, Bats. Got it. Got one. Way to stop dogs attacking you on your rounds. What is it? It's not poison, is it? No. This. It's a dog a deterrent. It gives out a signal that only dogs can hear. My brother-in-law works down at Kennels, 
and they use these to control the more boisterous ones. Well, I've heard of them, but I, I don't think we're allowed to use them. Who the hell's going to know? Which would you prefer, a bollocking from the governor or rabies? Do they really work, do they? Of course they work. My brother-in-law's a trained dog handler. Come on, I'll show you. Is it? Fifteen quid. I'll take it. Got a new one in the car. Press to eight. Come in, Basil. I'm clear, Rain. Anything for me? Nothing, darling. Return to base, Basil. Roger. Quest the cabs. Desmond! How are you? Yes. Hmm. Just hold on one moment. We've got any drivers available. I've got a job in 15 minutes, Sam. Andre's out, so's Cambridge, so's Barry. Henry's still missing. Basil's on his way back, but I don't know how long he'll be. I've got Desmond from Trident Cars on the line. They're fully booked, they're trying to sub some work out. This is class stuff. Kensington, Mayfair. Bonio's just arrived. Brilliant. Brilliant. Desmond, you're in luck. Yes, I have got a driver available. Yes, well, yes, will you just give us a call when you're ready? We won't let you down. Bye for now. Philip, I didn't think he was working today. I wasn't. I've had another bust up with Chrissy, haven't I? She wants me to put a couple of extra hours in down here, so uh, cancel tonight's gig. <laughs> what happened to you? That bloody dog of mine went mad this morning. Dragged me down the street and I went arse over tip. Must have seen a cat or something. What was the row about this time? I don't know. She's got a few things up her chest, that's not it, anyway. What'd she say, then? I didn't say anything. Just talked for hours. Alan? Why do people call you Bonio? I don't know, mate. Must be very stupid people. You know, the more I discover about women, the more confused I get. When Chris and me first got together, everything was nice and easy. And we got a flat and a couple of kids. Now she wants to get all serious. I'm the wrong man to ask, Philip. My parents had an arranged marriage. Not sure where it was arranged, though. Millwall football ground to be my guess. <laughs> Second job's yours, Basil. Aye, thanks a lot, Sam. Hey, Phil. How was the gig last night, huh? Oh, don't ask. Bloody disaster. Thinking of giving it all up. Don't do that, Phil. No, you're good. Yeah, he had a fine future as a singer once. Then his voice broke. <laughs> <laughs> How can his voice break? It ain't made of glass, is it? <laughs> it's just a saying, Marlon. Well, why do people say it, then? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't mean broken as in smashed. Press the cabs. Yes, Desmond. It means a young man's voice has got deeper. It's something that happens to you when you're a lad. So, uh, where's the picture? Oh, what happens? Oh, really? Well, it, it's a physical... Yes, um, this is Madeleine. Yes, got... Na natural thing. And, uh, uh, Your tui's you dropped down. <laughs> uh, yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, a bit. Desmond? What are tui's? Yes, got it. Pinky yes. and Burke. Oh, it's perfectly party. normal, Marlon. It happened to you. Uh, don't worry, we won't let you down. Okay. When? Well, I don't know exactly when. I mean, you don't sign cards for it. It just normally happens to a lad when he's been doing about 12 or 13. Happened to me when I was 23. 23? Mm. Met Chrissy, biggest bollock I ever dropped. <laughs> Phil? You've got to go to the Dorchester Hotel. Now, that is the Dorchester Hotel in Hyde Park. And pick up a Mrs. Madeleine Dwyer. Take her home to a place near Lithbrook in uh, Bahamshire. Dorchester? Yes, the Dorchester. Use my jag. You just sent Cambridge down the car wash with it. Oh, God. Why don't these zombies think? 
Well, I hope your car's nice and clean. Oh, and this is an account job, so give the lady a receipt. Well, go on, get going. Do you think she'll mind if I stop and get some food on the way? You do not stop for a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is a lady. I believe this. I'm starving. I've eaten since last night. There. Can I stop for something to eat? I just don't understand, do they, Ring? There is a great deal of difference between some tart in our walk of life and a lady. No, Sam. They don't understand. It's not funny, Marlon. Take it from me. And I've got something in here that'll put a stop to his fun and games. It's a dog deterrent. What's it do? He deters dogs. Let's see how he likes a bit of his own medicine, eh? Come over here. Come and get an earful of this spot. Basil! That's the way. A bit closer. Basil! What is it, Marlon? Do you want these batteries? <laughs> Excuse me, madam. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but um, I seem to recognize your face. Have we met somewhere before? We may have met in a previous life. You're muddy. I've seen you in magazines and on our TV at awards dues. You're married to Jimmy Price, original sin. Yes, that's right. I'm Maddie Price. I call myself Mrs. Dwyer to stop minicab drivers recognizing me and saying you're married to Jimmy Price, the rock legend. This is incredible. There are three of them, you know, the greatest rock singers in the world. That's Bono, Freddie Mercury, and your husband, Jimmy Price. <laughs> Am I taking you to Jimmy's house? Yes, you're taking me home. No, oh, no. Wait till I tell people. I love your husband. You love Jimmy, do you? He is the greatest. What do you think of me? Oh, I envy you. Living with a rock legend. Not that I'd want to do what you do with... You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to get as close to him as you do. This is incredible. I've got a band, you know. Yeah. Well, we're not in Original Sin's class. Obviously not. You're driving a minicab. Hey, I've got a tape here of me singing. Sh shall I play it? No. OK. You can play it in the studio. What studio? Turn left through these gates. I understand modern women. Now, why am I not surprised? Well, you go into a pub, right, and you see some tart and you think, cool, now that looks like a right old router. So you go over, oh, like a gentleman, and you want to break the ice, right? So you say to her, <clears throat> here, I know what would look good on you. And she says, what? And you say, me, right? Then I'll bet you, I'll bet you, yeah, that she'll come back with some smart addict remark and make you look a fool in front of your mates. I imagine that happens quite often, doesn't it, Barry? Exactly. Mrs. Price. 
No! I am the High Priestess Nalem. I was born 2,000 years ago in Egypt. I return whenever I am needed. Oh, right. Stay. This is price. You shouldn't be doing this. Phil. No, I mustn't. No, I was saying your name. Oh, sorry. I am the priestess of love. My body is yours. Your body is mine. Oh. Right. What do you think of me, Tape? Tell me what you like, Phil. Tell me who you like. Speak their names to me. Um, Clapton's good. Yes. The Stones. The Stones are okay. I'd simply read they're good. You too? Oh, thank you. No, you too. Oh, yeah, sorry. I love Bono. Who else do you love, Bill? Speak their names to me. What about Jimmy Price? Oh, yeah, I love your husband. If you love Jimmy, you can love me. But first, we must partake of the wine and break bread. I am your slave, Phil. Tell me what you desire. Anything, Phil. Just ask. Anything. You wouldn't have a bit of amp for this, would you? Yeah, go on, go, you bastard! You stupid little minicab driving, you stupid little minicab! Okay, see you around. Only just my luck, eh? I even have to turn to the occult these days to get laid. Oh, when I do, what happens? I get a stupid little minicab driving, a stupid little minicab, and it turns out to be a puff! You stupid little minicab! Pleasure to meet you, um, uh, Amanda. Angela. Oh, sorry, um, Angela. What's wrong with your hand? Oh, I, I was attacked by a Staffordshire Bull Terrier earlier today. Oh, bad luck. Yeah, um, well, so you're something of a, a career girl person, Angela. Mm, this is delicious, oh. Sounds as though it looks as though you're enjoying it. I used to run my own department with over 200 people working there. Really? Oh, that's quite a responsibility, being in charge of 200 people. Well, I wasn't in charge as such, but basically I ran it. I mean, it couldn't function without me. The head of group said to me one day, he said, Angela, Angela, he said, this department would fall into total chaos without you at the helm to guide us. He had tears in his eyes. Sacking me was the hardest decision you've ever had to make. I said to my husband of the time, George, Simon, I said, that firm will be in liquidation within six months. Yes, well, they must have regretted losing you. Who, who did you work for? British Airways. Oh, well, they seem to have ridden the storm. I mean, they're, they're still ticking over. And she came in wearing a hood. <laughs> What, sort of like a duffel coat? No, uh, like a priest's robe, you know, a long cape thing with a hood underneath. Very good. What was she like? Well, it's in her 40s, you know, but still in good shape. Very good shape. 
Next thing I know, she's given me a flash and wants to play magic hot dog, you know. Now you see it, now you don't. So, what did you do? Oh, well, I'm not interested, you know. I've got Chrissy and the kids at home. I don't, I don't play them sort of games. Press the cabs. Let me get this straight. When she first when gets in ring? the car, she's normal. And he hasn't arrived yet. Perfectly straight. Well, I radioed him you know, I recognise her, and we're not chatting. And then I said how much I love to our old man, you know. Okay. Just admiration. Bye -bye. Next thing, bang, she's on my neck like a rash. Yeah, I think he must have turned her on. Oh, and then it's out with the old Ann Brasker, and on with the heavenly anorak. You all lucky you got out when you did, mate. Oh, this is silence of the lambs time. <laughs> There's no telling what could have happened next. That one could have been drugged. Then she could have changed it to the bed and kept you as a sex toy down in the cellar. Oh, don't even talk about it, mate. I'm still in shock. Phil, I've got a job for you, darling. I'm first ring. No, Phil's been requested. Must be one of his regulars. Bit of a trot, love. 17 Winter Street, Bermondsey. Bermondsey? It's a bit out of our area, isn't it? Uh, I must have had this job before, Sam. Rings a bell, Winter Street. I'll see you later. Mm. Even Margaret Thatcher thanked me for my advice. Oh, yeah. She visited my women's institute one day. Well, I say mine. I, I don't actually run it, but it would crumble without me. I said to her, Maggie, don't ever turn your back on Geoffrey Howe. If you turn your back on him, he'll be in like a setter. And I was right. You married, Basil? No, I always look like this. What's happening? Take it easy. It's Phil, ain't it? Yeah. What do you want? It's him. this receipt and uh, I found this in one of my machines it's got your name on it man it's what I wanted to talk to you about yeah yeah let's have a walk <sighs> 17 Winter Street man it's where I was born oh of course I knew I'd heard it before <laughs> Oh, I've only read it in your autobiography, and that's all. You know, they put a blue plaque on Paul McCartney's old house. A demolition order on mine. <sighs> you don't have to leave that where it is. That, that should be part of the national heritage. Oh, Mrs. Capstick used to live here. She lent us some money to pay for my mum's funeral. I buried my canary out the back there somewhere. A little cross made out of lolly sticks. I saw you at Earl's Court and at Wembley years ago. You were brilliant. It was just before you went off to America, you know, had that big hit with the Mystery Caller album. Did you shag her, Phil? 
eh? Maddie, my wife. Did you sort her out? No, I just dropped her off and that was it. No, but actually it wasn't just it, was it? You went in the house. Well, she asked me to bring suitcases into the hall. And then you went in my studio and you played your tape. Well, Maddie said, M M Mrs. Price said to see how it sounded through proper speakers. What did you think of me tape? So, well, you have to understand, Phil. It's Maddie has problems. Call it the experts, it's been caused by my phenomenal success. Maddie has this uh, jealousy or need or whatever you want to call it. And she has to have her share of the uh, adoration I receive. Oh. And whenever we meet a fan, a man fan who's fallen over himself to pay me compliments, Maddie has to have him. I'm not the first one. He might be the last. Maddie has a history of one night stands. I, I didn't do anything, Jim. She put on a robe and give you the. 2,000-year-old Egyptian princess, bollocks. Um, she did mention something, yeah. Oh, I suppose she got the wine out, yeah? There was a drug knocking about. Yeah. Same old M.O. Of course, you know what it was for, don't you? Sublimation. Was it Jim? I, I wouldn't know. I'm not a wine man. You're taking a piss? No. Really, I only drink lager or tequila. Sublimation. That's what she does. I got that from the Harley Street psychiatrist who was looking after. She had him as well. Whenever it happens, man, I have to go and see the guy, whoever it is. I feel like they've, you know, dirtied me. Or maybe they're laughing at me. I have to have respect, man. Coming from an area like this, respect is very important. I didn't do anything disrespectful to you. No, I'm not a violent man. No, I know you're not. I can't speak for them. I want to go back to the car. I'm going to listen to your tape. I want to have a little word with you. Have a word with you. It's nothing personal. It's just a job. Right. A cry in the night. A homeless town on a cold, cold sky. A cry in the night. Feelings. Oh. Nice meeting you. Nice take, Phil. Shame about the shite songs on it. Jim, Jimmy! What? Can I have your autograph? Uncle Basil's got a surprise for you. <laughs> Come on, youngly swine. Come and see what I've got. You're not a keeper then, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Chris, 
Stop it. It's my fault, isn't it? I made you cancel last night's gig. And been for all those horrible things I said you wouldn't have been driving, and that scum wouldn't have got hold of you. Don't be silly. It's just one of those things. You didn't get a glimpse of any of them? They chucked me from behind. Don't stand a chance. Oh! I can't even kiss you, you're so bruised. There is one place where I'm not bruised. Just suffer. Two lines. 